All right, so we will go ahead and, and get started seeing that we have a quorum. And so three, we will go ahead and open up the Freetown Lakeville uh, Regional Finance Subcommittee. Uh, just a, a quick roll call of the members. Uh, myself, Steve Owen, is present. Uh, Katie, Kelhita. You're muted, Katie, if you... Oh, yes, I'm, yes. <laughs> Sorry. I All wasn't. right. Lorraine Carboni. Present. Okay, and then Jen Blum. Here. Okay, and I also see uh, Trevor Matthews. Here. All right. Uh, also present is uh, Alan Strauss, Superintendent of Schools. We have Kara Lees, the Director of Finance, uh, School Committee member Sherry Barron, uh, Ari Sky, the Lakeville um, Town Administrator, uh, Deb Petty from the Freetown uh, Town Administrator, uh, as well as um, Margaret French from the uh, Freetown uh, Finance Committee. Uh, did I miss any of the board members? Okay. So um, the, obviously the continued conversation in this session is the uh, FY24 budget. Uh, we had sent around to the committee members an updated um, assessment sheet that is uh, on the screen that we're sharing right now. Uh, for that, I'm assuming everybody uh, received that, correct? Okay. Um, and just from a, a district perspective, um, um, the couple of changes that we just wanted to highlight, and we can have uh, Kara uh, comment further, or even uh, Alan as well. So two changes that uh, have been applied in here are uh, the two highlighted items you will see and and just to carry on the conversation that we had the last uh, regional FinCon meeting as well as comments from the last school committee meeting. Um, there were one time technology purchases um, that are not covered by ESSER funds that uh, we would be changing the source to fund them would be from E and D. Uh, so that's the E and D line item of the 176, uh, 378 that you see on uh, the assessment sheet. Um, and then the other change is the increase of the circuit breaker line item uh, to utilize another 150K out of that circuit breaker uh, line uh, that is highlighted there. Um, and the impact to that, if you scroll down for me, Kara, you can see um, that Freetown is brought down to an uh, increase of 1.6%, yes. as well as Lakeville is brought down to a 2.43%. So uh, I will uh, pause there and um, open up for any questions. So before we do that, uh, Kara from a director of finance position and, and Alan from your position, uh, this is something that uh, you are in support of from a standpoint of a, a budget change or budget presentation. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, you know, we all know that the district um, does have some E&D that we could utilize and for the technology, um, I think it's one of the areas of the budget that we could say um, it would be a one time item per se versus something that um, will keep recurring. Although um, I have warned um, everyone of the fact that one day all of the Chromebooks will expire. Um, but, you know, I do think that, um, you know, we have created a plan, uh, which we did distribute in last year's budget book on the Chromebooks um, to sort of keep gearing up for that. Um, and the circuit breaker, I do think that we are going to have some additional increases in FY24. Um, the original circuit breaker balance that we were showing to be used was is really the monies that we're receiving in this year, FY23, that we will hold as a fund balance. Um, and then I do think that it would be safe for us to take a $150,000 infusion from FY24 to support this special education budget. I do think we're going to have some additional monies coming in from Circuit Breaker. Um, I think the district will be seeing um, some increases due to the transportation reimbursements. Um, and I don't know, Steve, did you want me to go over any of the changes from the initial budget request, our last regional FinCom, to what we had in public hearing? Because there were some updates on the state 
um, chapter 70, chapter 71. Um, I can certainly go through those as well. Yeah, I think we could just highlight those. And then I, I see that a few folks have some questions on that too. So maybe you'll address the questions, but I think it's okay. important to highlight those changes. Great. Um, so um, as you all know, we had our initial budget presentation on February 1st, and we did have our bu uh, public hearing presentation on March 15th. And so this assessment sheet um, reflects those changes, and then it reflects the additional um, revenue changes that we I just highlighted um, since that March 15th um, time perspective. Um, and so the first large one is, is chapter 78. Um, we did see for the first time that the district is no longer categorized as a minimum aid district, where traditionally um, we had received just $30 per pupil. Um, the Chapter 70 formula, um, as it currently stands, is actually providing more aid under the formula than just the $30 minimum per pupil increase. As a result, this $11,657,459 um, is an increase over the prior year of $307,096. And although uh, for us, it feels like it's significant, one thing that I may add is that it's only 2.7%, um, which is much lower than what we're facing in today's world of inflation. So just, just a reminder there. Um, and then for transportation, chapter 71, um, that is an increase from the original assessment sheet that we provided in our budget books. Um, it was increased by $210,214, um, I believe, from the prior year due to um, increasing the reimbursement from an assumed 80% to a 90% rate. That 90% rate was published in the governor's initial budget. Um, and then one other thing I'll note is that um, our total spending, our expenditures did change um, from a few factors. Um, the first has to do with um, what's called state and county assessments. It's money that actually comes out of Chapter 70. It's for payments for children who live in Freetown and Lakeville that attend other school districts or charter schools. And as a result, um, we had budgeted very conservatively in this line item um, because it's been increasing over time. Um, but based on the cherry sheet that was published, based on our actual enrollment data of students attending these other schools, that number was reduced by $149,000. And that's because we actually did see a reduction in the number of students that we are sending elsewhere. I believe the reduction was by 17 students. Um, and then the other reductions in the expenditures that we had from our original budget to the public hearing, the first was a reduction of one bus. Um, Currently, we are operating at 24 routes, and we have been budgeting at 23 routes. Um, and we do believe, um, the superintendent do, does believe that we'll be able to work with our transportation provider to reroute the buses and save on this ad additional route, and that would impact the budget by $96,000. And then the other item that was removed was the um, intermediate school special education teacher was taken out of the budget model for an impact of 55,000. And um, last but not least, um, for special education van drivers, um, we did look, uh, did a closer review at the account and we found $67,000 worth of cost savings. We were able to reduce two positions that actually are not being utilized um, without even impacting our current service levels. Um, so that's that's really a summary of some of the changes that have happened in our budget um, since this original uh, budget that was put out. Thank you, Kara. Um, any questions? I know Ari, you had originally. Yeah, I have a question. <clears throat> okay. um, so I'm comparing the assessment sheet from March 7th, the last one we got, to the one we got yesterday. And one thing I noticed is that um, while there was a hundred, well, there was one hundred and seventy-six thousand added in um, ND, and another hundred and um, was it one hundred and fifty thousand added in um, circuit breaker. Correct. The assessment didn't go down by that by that by that combined amount. It looks like total net school spending is higher than it was in the 
or seventh version, it went from 42624 to 42774, from two versions yep. that I'm holding? Yep, so um, the required local contribution would have been adjusted for um, in this in this scenario. So when the governor put out their initial budget model, um, we would have adjusted the required local contribution. Wouldn't that have been done for the March 7th version? No. It should have been. That's correct. I'd have to look at the March seventh version. Yeah, because it looks like you expense. It looks like you added. I, when you look at this, it looks like you added one hundred fifty thousand dollars in expenses when you added the revenue in. So, um, I'd I'd have to take a look, Ari, a closer okay. look at it. Yeah, I, don't I just think, I, I, it, it should not have. Okay, just you know, I mean, when we look at it, it seems like we if we had three hundred twenty-six thousand dollars additional revenue, so we should go down by three hundred twenty-six thousand dollars. And then that didn't seem to happen. So, okay. So March seventh, I'd have to I'd have to take a look at that. Yeah, that's the last one I have. I got I got a whole pile of them. Care, care. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Okay, that that was one question. I had. The other question I had was I just want to make sure that, that you guys are comfortable with the idea of moving. I know it's been. I know there was a push by some people to to take tech and have it funded by E and D. I personally am a little concerned about sustainability. Um, e and D is one-time money, and tech is not a one-time cost. Um, you're you're going to have, yeah. I would think, yeah. I don't know what your life cycle replacement schedule looks like, but I would think that these are costs. You'll see these costs next year as well, and I want to make sure you're not creating a larger structural deficit. You already have one with thanks to the ESSER ESSER positions, and I'd be afraid this. I'd be concerned if this makes it bigger. More thought than a, than a question. So pr primarily, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, Kara, these are what makes up the 177 are hardware purchases, correct? Yeah, and that is mostly Chromebooks. Yes. Yeah, so this is a a what I'll say uh you know more of a, a capital expenditure because it's going to be a multi-year, which I think we've planned for a five-year model of these Chromebooks. It is, but you know, Chromebooks are capital the way that like lawnmowers are capital. You know, they, they kind of, they, they, they're just not heavy duty capital. And, and, and general master of law actually recognizes that you're only allowed to finance a technology over five years as opposed to the 30 years you can do for a building, you know, that kind of thing. So- nope. um, wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly agree, wholeheartedly yes. agree. So, so and, I, and, and, I, and, I, and I, I know you're being responsive to some questions have been out there and I don't want to push it too hard, but but I just I just, I just would caution you guys to make sure that what you're doing is sustainable in the long term, given that you know you've got some issues that'll be coming up in the next year or two with, with the ESSER positions running out. It, yeah, and it, believe me, I'd be more than happy to remove this as an offset, right? <laughs> but with that being said, I do think that um, as, as we ran into this position this year, Right, there was some funds that went back to the towns. Right, I think this is an a, a, an easier way to pass through of this. Uh, I know from my perspective, I'm comfortable with that. Um, one thing I I will say, and I apologize for not covering at the top of the meeting, these proposals would obviously have to be voted on by the full school committee. Right. Oh, sure, um, I get that. I get that. <laughs> right. So um, I I know from. A regional FinCom, Jen and I have reviewed this. We wanted to, you know, bring this to the table here to get people's thought process. But I, I appreciate your thought as far as how we use E and D. So what I really would like to do is get an explanation just for the change. And it looks like the expenditure budget went up and offset some some of the reduction, some of the additional revenue you put in. So that that would be good to get that. Okay. Uh, it looks like Deb, you have a question. Well, I have a couple of um, comments. So wow. there is a revolving fund for the Chromebooks as well. So how does that get funded and what is the plan for that? Okay. Yep, so that's part of the whole, the whole picture for the future. So right now there is not a lot of money, mm -hmm. but it is building up. Um, and eventually, obviously we'll keep building up. Building up, but if we had to replace all the Chromebooks that we um, purchased for, the pandemic, uh, which we will have to do, uh, today's value is $2 million. The They've doubled in price since the original investment. And so I do think that the district will need all of those monies cumulatively to replace the Chromebooks when they do expire. And the issue with the Chromebooks is that um, not only are they being used daily by the classrooms, the students, but they're also needed for MCAS. 
And if the expiration date um, of those Chromebooks come up, then we're not able to do the updates and able to then run MCAS testing. And this revolving fund is the insurance dollars, right, Kara? That's right. So it's really to, re you know, at the end of the day, to be used for repairs and whatnot. But, you know, hopefully that it also gains enough traction to help assist with some of the future purchases. Okay. And I guess I think that when I look at the budget, one of my concerns has been, oh, my real concern is sustainability. Um, you know, we haven't had a, a increase in students per se. And last year we added two new teachers. This budget calls for five new positions and we know we have three ESSER teachers that are going to have to be absorbed into the budget, I would presume, um, in next year. I just don't foresee how we're gonna sustain this, this number of new positions when we don't have you know, an influx of students. And I just don't, I, it, it's, it, I see you, I know you're trying to get to a number um, but I, my concern is sustainability, not necessarily the bottom line number. But how are we going to pay for this next year when we got three new positions, ESSER positions to be funded? And I don't see the, the need. You know, we hired two new teachers last year. We, we, the student enrollment increased by 18 students, and we, but we put on two new teachers. We're not really projecting more students this year, but yet we're, we're, we're adding five positions. And and the whole talk has been about special needs and, and, and the increase in those students and the teach the position that you decreased was the special needs teacher. Yeah. So it really is confusing to me of what we're doing here and what the goal is with these five new positions and how are we going to sustain that plus three Esther positions that are going to not be paid for by grant next year. So I think there's, there's two things. I think the the committee looks at the need. And again, we talked about this the other night at the school committee, just because we have a reduction of 100 students doesn't mean you can get rid of five teachers, right? That's not, um, education is not a manufacturing process in that um, majority of the new positions that we're not, they're not what we call quote unquote gen ed teachers. They are uh, positions tied to special needs. And where we're thinking of a, an influx of those students at the elementary level, which is why the grace uh, position was uh, affected in this particular case. As far as those positions from the SRPs, those are something that we are planning for, right? Which is part of the reason why we did not take any extra school choice funds to offset this assessment sheet. We do have a plan of, of trying to embed uh, those future teachers through the school choice uh, revenue line item. Uh, that is going to be a work in process, but that's the plan that we have. So that way we can effectively work those uh, into the operating budget and using school choice as a revenue stream to that. No, the other option here is is those positions that were um, brought in as part of the ESSER funds are not maintained, right? So that's something the school committee will evaluate and working with the administration uh, as far as that from a need basis. But the initial thought process is what we know today. We're looking at school choices as a, an offset to those that are covered by the uh, ESSER funds. Steve, the other thing that I'd like to add is the two para positions are both compliance positions. Um, they are one-to-ones that are needed for um, students who are in, in AES. So that, that certainly is compliance. Um, and, and just to clarify, those make up part of the five, right? So Correct. And just to clarify, two of the five are compliance as associated IEP that goes along with that, right? Correct, where, where students need a one-to-one -one as opposed to a one-to-two or a one-to-three. I, I, and I'm just, I, again, I'm still concerned with sustainability of this budget. Can you put um, your video back on, Deb? Just sure. because this is being recorded. Thank you. Again, I'm still concerned with the sustainability of it, um, adding the new positions. And, you know, our special needs numbers are, are 
we're projecting 100 new special needs students, but no new students coming in to the district, but 100 new special needs students. And what if that is not the case? I mean, this is just a projection, right? It's an estimate. Yeah. So, so keep in mind here, right? This is, and what we are gonna vote on on April 5th is the ceiling of the budget, right? Um, it typically what happens every year, we vote on the ceiling, the, ce the budget can go down between now in time meeting, but cannot go up in that particular case. Um, I, there are concerns that we have from a school committee perspective, just based upon numbers alone, right? To your point, while we are looking at historical data and see that there is a lot more requests for services coming in, it could end up where not all of them meet their requirements or, or more importantly, we don't meet the requirements of having enough of the, um, uh, model students to fit another classroom, right? So that could be an issue there. Um, the other big concern that we as school committee keep an eye on every year is class size. Um, and the last couple of years, we've had to add an additional classroom, classroom teacher while maintaining the budget because of the fact of the numbers we don't get any clarity on or more concrete clarity until after town meeting votes, right? So, uh, so I agree with you that we are look that sustainable, but class size is always going to be an issue, especially at the elementary school levels. We look at that because that's where we have seen an increase in students. Deb, in, in order to answer your question in regard to um, the special education position that we removed, um, this is not a simple shuffle from a special education teacher. Um, can simply move down to elementary level. This was a special education teacher at Gray's, so therefore um, they were they were to be certified mild and moderate um, disabilities. And and what Ashley put together was the fact that the numbers there would not hold um, for us to necessarily need to add a third teacher. So. That's why that was pulled. So it's a separate conversation from the conversation in regard to um, increased numbers at FES and AES, for example, or preschool or um, anything. So, so they're not uh, interchangeable, which is why we removed that one. For those that are not speaking, can we have you mute? No. Uh, Lorraine Carboni. Just um, if we can, um, just to clarify, you had said that there were twenty four uh, buses on the routes right now, correct? And that you're looking to reroute um, down to twenty three. Yes. So. Um, <clears throat> We've run 24 buses this year and last year. Um, our contract calls for 23. Um, we have budgeted 23 buses um, originally last year, fiscal 23. So the additional bus that we were trying to add wasn't actually a new bus per se, but it was it was to compensate for the buses that were already running today. Um, Okay, so so that so that bus that you're talking about wasn't part of the contract. It was an add-on. Correct. Okay, so there was no penalty for removing nope. that bus. That's correct. Okay. All right. So that that nets a ninety-six thousand savings. You said. That's that's a ninety-six thousand dollars savings for FY twenty-four. Without that bus. All right. Um, and this hey, is probably sorry. Just, hmm? sorry, Derek, could you mute your line? Because we're getting a lot of feedback through, looks like your line there. Thank you. And, and Lorraine, one thing that's highlighted, it was pointed out at the meeting. Um, while from an expense perspective, it's a savings of 96K. Uh, it would actually also remove any revenue. So the net would be about a $22,000 savings, if you will, right? So the 96 off the top, but then any state reimbursement from, you know, chapter 71, you know, for okay. that. 
Yeah, so and, that, and, that revenue impact wouldn't start until FY25 because the busing reimbursements are always one year in arrears. One year behind, yep. yep. Okay, that was, and, that was my next question for that. Yep. 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 And then part of the strategy is, and we haven't done this in six years, is we should be rerouting every year, especially with a district of our size from a, a, a footprint that we cover, right? So this will, what we want to do is get the bus company to do that, especially with the number of changes we have from school to school. We still have stops on some of these bus routes where their children no longer there. So, um, you know, this will be, um, this will be part of that exercise that we're going to go through. Okay, thank you. Deb, Patty? Yes. You, Your you hand is still up. raised. Oh, I'm point? sorry. That's from no earlier. No worries, no worries. Oh, okay. okay, no worries. Any other questions from the, the committee or anybody? Okay. So well, I'm sorry, I was trying to unmute. Um, so, Carrie, you'll get back to us on that expense question. Yeah, I just took a look at it, and um, I can see what you mean. Where the change in the assessment from the prior only looks like it's the 176, 378. Um, and I think with the circuit breaker, it was probably just the formula on my spreadsheet. So I just have. Yeah, to it looks like the net school spending number went up. Yep. So I do think that. Um, this will obviously help the situation with the percentages. Okay. I'll, I'll rerun and re take another look at that. Great. Thank you, Ari. Sure. Just my old gig coming back to me. So, so Kara, are we saying that this assessment sheet will change from what is showing here? Yeah, I believe. Let's, let's let her, yeah, as, as a former budget geek myself, let's give her a chance to kind of verify the number. Yeah. Yeah, no, the reason why I'm, I'm questioning it, Ari, because obviously this is our last scheduled meeting before we have a budget vote as a school committee. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think we can so, assume the number's not going to go up. It's not going to so, go up. Yep. Absolutely yep. not. So, so my question to the, the board members here, are we comfortable giving a recommendation vote on this number, knowing it is going to go down, that this is the ceiling, right, as presented here? Um to that and it's a, basically a recommendation to the full school committee that hey this this is the ceiling number that we're moving forward with uh, obviously Kara, are we looking at this this could potentially go down for that it's not going to go up um and then obviously as as numbers change you know to to deb your question if there's not a need for uh, a, an additional pre-k teacher we can assess that uh, but right now this is what we're looking at from a, a budgetary assessment sheet Margaret French, you have your hand up. Uh, yes. Hi. Um, I was just just wanted to bring up that we don't see any cuts on this new budget. All it is is just moving money around and taking it from other places. Um, I'm still. I brought up last Wednesday, and I'm still concerned as well as Deb with the sustainability and with these new positions and what happens next year. So Margaret, I'm not sure if you heard Kara, but there were cuts to the budget. Were you on the call during that explanation? Yeah, I was. And I'm, I'm looking here and I'm looking at, I don't see the cuts here. I don't see the cuts in the, except for that, the grace teacher, special ed teacher, I don't see any other, all I see is money being just reallocated. Instead of being on the budget, it's gonna come from E&D. Instead of coming on the budget, it's coming from circuit breaker. I don't see that as sustainable. Yep, so Kara, can you please, for Margaret's perspective, reiterate the, I think there are three bullet points to cut. Sure, um, so between the February 1st original budget meeting, the initial presentation and the March 15th um, public oh, hearing, no. um, we did reduce 96,000 for one bus route. Um, 
we reduced for the grace special education teacher that you just referred to margaret for 55,000 and right. we did reduce for two van drivers um that are currently vacant that have been for quite some time which was 67,000 um those are the three expenditure side cuts that we made um by march 15th i'm not sure if that helps um so that's so i'm i'm concerned with the the six new positions and you're saying you're cutting one that still leaves five there are still five that's correct um So there are five new positions, right? Two, two paraprofessionals, yeah. Right, two of the five are compliant piece. So it's not like a, we're just adding to that. They're required for one-to-one -one components to that. Uh, and I then understand there are, that. Okay. The FES position would be compliance if we have enough um, role model students. So that would be another compliance, um, which leaves the adjustment counselor and the team chair. Okay, so you're saying if we don't get this 114 new special needs kids, that maybe you don't need, um, you can cut back on that. Does that mean you're cutting back on the FES preschool teacher? You're cutting back on the team leader? I mean, we so just to clarify, positions. it's not it's not tied to just special needs students. There is a requirement that for a new classroom, not only for the you also need a role model student ratio. So if it's not just the increase of the special needs requests that we get, but if we don't have enough role models to meet that ratio, we couldn't open up an additional classroom. So that classroom, that pre-K teacher would be cut. And right? has think, anybody, right? we, we asked, and has anybody looked at, at restructuring the classes at FES and freeing up a teacher to potentially go down to the, the preschool for a year and see what happens? So you're proposing we restructure the gen ed classroom to increase class size and those to move a teacher down. Is that what you're suggesting? I'm suggesting looking at it. Yeah, no, uh, I don't. Again, I'm one of eight. Uh, I think the full committee has kept the elementary classroom size low. So we don't have student services needs in the future. That's what we have seen. Um, so I don't, based upon the classroom size numbers now, notwithstanding the kindergarten numbers, I don't think that's a, a model uh, worthwhile looking at. Again, that's just my one opinion of, of A, but I think it's pretty consistent as far as the thought process from the school committee as a whole. You also would need to make sure that you have a teacher at FES who is um, certified special education. And and again, I'm not saying do this. I'm saying, have you looked into this? Has this been floated as a possibility? I mean, the kindergarten classes alone, there are five sections with only 15 students in each, and there is a sum total of four special needs kids. That's just one example. I'm not saying do it. I'm saying, has it been investigated? Has it been looked into? And no one's been able to answer that question. Well, th this is the first that I've heard that request, but Margaret, I'll pose the question to back to you. You said you're an educator. Would you yes. increase the classroom size of kindergarten up to 22, 23? I looked at those numbers. It would increase the classes to 19 and 18. Not over 20. Yep. I think 20 and, is and a good from number. An educated from a kindergarten perspective? Can it, well, those kids would then be in first grade. I don't, I'm not sure. We were never forwarded the numbers from the preschool. So I have no idea what the preschool numbers are. 
And again, it's not my job to to try and rearrange these things. Again, my question is, has anybody else looked at it whose job it is? We actively look at class sizes at the elementary school level, which is why we, you know, if you look at the prior year history, we have added classroom teachers because the numbers go through the roof based upon what we get this time of year. So, um, so what is specifically, your magic number? We specifically look at the classroom size at, at kindergarten, right? We don't know those numbers. Those continue to change well into the summer. Um, so I, I do think it's a, an, an active thing that do we look at here. And, and I would not be in a position to propose uh, moving a teacher out of gen ed to cover that preschool teacher for a number of reasons. And one of which the superintendent mentioned. Yeah. Steve, can I speak? Yeah, yeah, just hold on one second. There's a few other folks that had their hand raised, Deb, so I will we'll get to you on that. But let me just, Thanks. can we get to Leah and Katie, just because they had some questions? So, Leah, I think you were first, so I'll go ahead and start with you. Um, so, I do have um, a question. I just want to understand. So, right now, the two positions for um, Asawampsit, those are compliance positions? Yes. Okay. Yeah, two paraprofessionals, there'd be one on one to one paraprofessionals. That's correct. Yes. And what grade level are we talking about? So those would have to be new because they're in coming to kindergarten or so it's one who is going into kindergarten, one who is going into first, who we have um patchworked to get um coverage but have not given a true one-to-one -one all year okay um so we've been in compliance but could be better in compliance i guess is that what we're saying um, well, we're not meeting the needs of the iep right so that's where i think the, the compliance correct. issue would be it's not okay. a better <laughs> it's that we're not all right so um now going back to preschool um so I just want to understand, and this has been my question now for, I believe this is my third meeting asking this question, um, is expanding preschool a want or a need? Is it a desire to offer more seats or is it a compliance need right now? So again, it, it depends upon, it, it's a need, um, but it's going to not be a need if we do not have enough role model students. So we have enough role model students, then we need to be in compliance and, and take care of it. If we don't, then we will have to service those students anyway, and we will just not do it within a classroom. Okay, to me, that's a big gift because there's a whole revenue side to role model students too. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let me go back to another point that I thought we said that a bus is $96,000. However, with the reimbursement, we're only looking at a 10 or $20,000 savings. I thought when Ta Cara just gave us the, um, things that were removed, I thought she included a $96,000 bus. So I'm not sure um, because we have to pay for it this year and then we get the savings next year. Is that why we're making it a $96,000 savings this year? Yes, so the expenditure that savings correct. would be an FY24 and that's 96,000. The revenue impact would be an FY25. And if you estimate it, it might be 70, 75,000 less in FY25. Okay, that's definitely a little more confusing <laughs> than I like. And I did join a few minutes late because I did just get home from town hall. Um, did anyone um, remind the, the school committee? Now, here's here's the way I feel, okay? Honestly, I, I look to the superintendent and all the 
you know, school staff to put on the best education program that they possibly can with the available money, okay? I look at the school committee's role as trying to assist them with doing that, but, you know, while I feel as though the school committee would love to have an unlimited budget, the school committee is still responsible to the residents of both of their towns. And no one is saying that uh, no one hates it more than me when kids are used as a bargaining tool. I think it's gross, disgusting when people do that. But the reality is that um, we've been very open with our budgets and we have shown everyone who will look, everyone who will listen, we've told that we are, we are worried, we are concerned with our own town budget because our new growth is lower we have no marijuana revenue to count on and we are concerned. So I, I would ask some of the school committee members at this point to really ask themselves, what can they live without? Because, you know, we really, I mean, we have presented a level services budget. We have told our town clerk, she can't have a part-time position. I mean, we are at level service. And I'm not quite sure why the schools can't go into doing a level service budget. And should those needs arise, why we can't try to address it at a fall town meeting. We always had a pretty good relationship with the schools when, you know, when that was the case. I trust me, no one gets it more than me. When my son was in first grade, there was three IEPs in the class. And by the end of September, there were 11, okay, which was more than half the class. I get it, but I think predicting or trying to predict that isn't necessarily the right thing right now. Maybe we can revisit the, 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 new, the actual needs in the fall, but I would beg the school committee, I am not putting the burden here on the superintendent or on the business manager or anyone else. The burden is on the school committee to live within the money that we all have. And I would beg them to really look at a level services budget, no increase in new positions until we are definitely sure we need them. End of rant. Thank you very much. Yep. No, the, and, and I think this has been, right? So you see a majority of the increases are tied to special ed, right? And we're coming out of, a pandemic where a lot of students require services. If we wanted to add all the positions that required in this, right, you're right, we wouldn't be at, it would be much further than we are today uh, in this. So I, I hear what you're saying. There are some positions that um, are a wait and see, um, you know, in, in if we could present it back to the full school committee if we wanted to weigh that out, but our vote here is a is a ceiling. And, you know, over the last number of years, we've actually come lower after the initial vote of that. So we have been very supportive in, in understanding of the towns and that aspect of it. Um, <clears throat> the two other positions that are not, I'll say, compliance-based, definitely something that we've looked at. Um, they're the number of requests that we get at great from a, a social emotional perspective. The need is there, right? It's not a compliance perspective, but the need is there. And then as far as the team lead, um, you know, could we sit there and say, no, we're not doing it, but we're going to be increasing the workload and then ultimately not being in compliant because we have to have, we have 45 days from the initial uh, evaluation to be done and have a report and meetings to be compliant in there. Um, so we just run the risk on those other two of not being compliant in that case. But I think Gen Ed, we, well, we have new classroom offerings. We have not added new teachers uh, into those perspectives. And then the other big blind share of our budget is tied to uh, salaries. And I think that uh, we've done a good job as far as what our contract is at and the percentages that were uh, agreed to on both sides. <clears throat> So I, I think that is uh, very well. And I know the towns were part of that process uh, as we move that forward. Katie, I know you have your hand up. Just one one more thing, Lee, I appreciate um, your perspective. 
Kara and I are meeting, um, and again, it's in the early stages, um, with looking at, is there anything we can do in regard to insurance? Um, and we want to make sure that we provide um, similar um, insurance opportunities for, for all of our staff. Um, everybody's on the same plans, mostly. Um, and and make sure we take care of our retirees. But you know, insurance came up very high at nine point seven seven, and so uh, Kara and I are are working diligently to see what we can do on that end um, with other health plans. So I did want to put that out there. Yeah, um, just in rebuttal, and then I, I'll I'll not talk anymore. Um, you know, you can talk to Ari about that because. We had to do the same. Our percentages were were off. We couldn't retain employees because we were at a 50-50 and Ari did a lot of work on that. We were able to present a unique option of high deductible with HSAs and some of the young folks love it. So, you know, I, I, I believe everyone can be creative. We all have to be, you know, to try to do this. And, it, you know, I appreciate everyone's efforts. It's just... I have to say my 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 piece. No, I understand that, but please understand we are looking um, to make sure we find the best available um, insurance opportunity. Um, Katie, you have your have your have had your hand up for a while. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just had a, a couple of questions about the the team lead position that um, is posted. Um, so this is an entirely administrative role, is that correct? There's no um, interaction with the students in terms of, you know, special needs. It's 100% it's administrative. I wouldn't say there's no interaction with students, yeah. it's not a teaching position for sure, um, but it is administrative, yes. It is administrative. Okay. and. and do we have a position now that is doing the same functions? We're just simply adding this as a, you know, in, in anticipation of increased need. There is somebody now doing these functions. The um, director of student services is doing it, um, who has multiple hats to wear, um, including including out of district placements and in, in, including um, residency concerns, McKinney Vento. Um, all of which take her away from the ability to do the job she's supposed to, which is create the vision and, and the frameworks for special education, but she is the one who is currently doing it now. Okay. And the new position is full-time? Yes. Okay. And do you know approximately how many students, and I'm sorry, this may have already been brought up, how many students um, they're servicing now for... So special she needs. is servicing all of the special needs students at the high school. I can, I don't have those numbers in front of me. I will send it to you tomorrow morning. I'll okay. send it to the whole committee tomorrow morning. Okay. And, and the numbers of um, that were anticipated to grow as well. Yep. yep. Thank you. And, and just to clarify, I think it's, it's that role covers the high school and out of district. Correct. And McKinney Vento. Yeah. Lorraine. Thank you, Alan. Um, so I'm not going to beat this. Um, I think we're all on the same page. And it's not just um, about our regional school budget. It's about our towns too. You know, we have we're going to be hitting some economic challenges um, over the next few years. So I know that we're, you know, we're looking inward to see what we can do to streamline. Um, and, um, you know, make, make things more sustainable um, going. So, you know, I'm not going to beat that. So I, I do know that the school committee will do their due diligence working with, um, you know, the administration to make that happen and looking out for the next few years. We don't know what the enrollment numbers are going to be over the next couple of years. Um, you know, they could, they could go down, they could go up slightly, but it is finding that, um, you know, that median that works for services as well as, um, you know, the students, um, you know, meeting their their test scores. But um, 
I, I know Lee is not part of this, um, you know, this committee, but, um, you know, she did mention that, you know, we could certainly go back in the fall um, if we needed to supplement um, the regional budget, if we were to make some additional, you know, decreases. But I just want to throw caution out there that this is not desirable. Um, obviously, if this is something that um, would have to be agreed upon by both towns, um, and I, in the history that I know, we've never really, we've never gone back um, at a later town meeting uh, to balance the, um, you know, the, the, the regional school budget because of, um, you know, a shortfall that I can recall, maybe it's happened, I, I just don't remember, but I just wanted to throw caution there. So um, I know you've made some great strides um, to get that number down um, to the 1.6 for Freetown and the 2.43 you know, for Lakeville. Um, I'm hearing everything um, that everybody's saying, especially um, Ms. French from um, Freetown about looking at those class sizes. So maybe that becomes more of a priority, um, Steve, going forward with, with the school committee that, you know, we kind of look, look at that again and see if, you know, there's some movement there. Um, I know we don't like to cut staff. Um, that's, you know, not something that any of us like to do, um, but there might be a way to reallocate, you know, some of those resources um, for the betterment of all especially where we're going to have to, you know, look at those three other three positions that are currently granted um, through the budget and, you know, won't be supplemented, you know, by the operational budget. But I just wanted to say that we are all thinking the same thing. And, you know, we, I just don't want to keep beating it, but I just wanted to say my piece. So thank you. Anybody else have any questions? I don't see any, Steve. Okay. Um, Steve, you're the only not. one hearing this. No. No, I thought it was me. I was like, oh, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. It's... I was afraid I was having a stroke. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's help him out. I, I'll say something. I, I think in listening in, apologies for being late. Um, we're all saying the same thing, right? We're all struggling to make sure that I think he's coming in, right? I just well, I'll let him talk. I just Carlos, I just texted him that we can't hear him. Okay. Um, I won't tell him what he sounds like though. He'd be a great MC. I think he's humming the beat for the school song. The crowd. It sounds like Max Headroom. <laughs> I'm gonna. I, so I don't want to do this. But I'm gonna mute him. <laughs> yeah, mute him. I'll get in trouble later. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He just he just came off, and we'll come back on. Go ahead, Carlos. Uh, thank you, uh, Alan. Uh, you know, I'm jumping in late. Apologies for being late. Um, I think we're, from what I'm hearing, we're all saying the same thing. We don't want to cut anybody's positions. We don't want to reduce anything. But as the towns, we are concerned about where the future lies, right? When we look at these numbers coming up, there's so much uncertainty in, in today's world that we need to make sure that our towns, not, not survive, that's a horrible word to say survive, but we need to be sure our towns stay ahead. And working with the schools is paramount. We need to make sure today, we have to really look at tomorrow. You know, what does tomorrow bring? When I say tomorrow, I mean next year, the, the, the year after. Freetown has, um, Lakeville has come out and said, hey, revenues are down based on XYZ. Freetown as well, we're in the same boat. So when we see budgets creeping up like this, um, there is cause for concern. And that's why there's so much emails going back and forth. And I do thank the, the folks that are going back and forth on the emails from both administrations and the, and the school committee answering our questions um, we're, we're not trying, we're, we're just thinking outside the box. We're just trying to figure out how do we do this to be sure our children, our parents, our district, and everybody in this committee 
right? Get what they need, but at the same time, our towns are successful in the future, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so thank you for everybody for adding their, their two cents, their three cents, their 25 cents, whatever it may be. Together, we'll get through this. When we're divided, we won't. So if that means maybe reducing classroom sizes should be on the table, like, like it was the bus. If it means talking about it again in the fall, maybe that's on the table. We have to be open to a lot of things coming up because this summer, this fall, we, we don't know what's, what's coming around the corner. So we have to make sure we're on the same page. So thank you for the teamwork. Um, we're all saying the same thing. We're all beating around the bush a little bit, which is, which is what, we're, what we're paid to do <laughs> in so many ways. But keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. That's all I want to say. My two cents. Thanks, Carlos. Um, collaboration, not confrontation. Absolutely. And, and we'll get there. There's no question. Numbers continue to get a little bit better each time we we, we have a conversation. Um, Kara, you did you see Leah's uh, question in the chat? I did not. Um, yes, so Circuit Breaker will certainly cover unexpected special needs costs that arise in the future. That is correct. The fund balance. Okay, but not, not enough to cover if we decide we need a preschool in September or in August, let's say. Theoretically, I mean, it could. I mean, we typically use circuit breaker for out of district um, expenditures. Always we have. Um, so that that's the current plan is that we would continue to do that and not use it for something like a position. And I, I think it's important, you know, Kara's right. I think I also think it's important to remember, and we talked about this um, at our last meeting, that there are um, out of district placements that are exorbitant, um, that we are always concerned about. Um, Kara's done a, a wonderful job, but um, you know, they, they range in, in costs from 25,000 to over 300,000 a year. Um, and, and we are responsible for them. So, um, just to keep in mind. Um, just because I don't have the papers in front of me, how much is in circuit breaker, Kara? So, um, right now we're using last year's fund balance. So at the end of this fiscal year, we'll have 1,158,000, which is what we originally put in next year's budget. Now that we're adding the 150,000, we'd then be using 150,000 of FY24's receipts, um, which means there would still be a healthy amount in the event that we do get some move-ins um, that have significant needs that certainly we may not be able to plan for. Um, so in, in my opinion, this $150,000 additional infusion to use towards FY24 budget um, really does leave um, some safeguards for the district so that we don't have to run to town meeting each and every time we have a move in with a significant need. Okay. And then just again, I'm sorry, I ran in from the car. I left my bag in the car. What's in the END right now? Um, 2.1 million. Um, the exact amount is on our PowerPoint, um, which I can address. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I have old eyes. I can't see anything on the phone. So it is, um, I just need one second here. I have the PowerPoint right in front of me. Um, it was certified at 2,154,733, which was over the cap by that 37,698 that we then returned to the town. So it gets you back to, an, it's really an allowable cap of 2.1 million. Um, and depending on how this budget votes um, at town meeting will depend on how much our cap is allowed to be for FY24, um, this FY23 rather. Okay, um, so we could absorb a spike in services, maybe not sustainably, but we're not going to be desperate for money with those monies sitting there, right? 
Agreed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And okay. All right. I, I think I'm all set. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. No Steve, you're back. Um, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I had to put more money in the meter. Uh, times are tough. So, um, did everyone get their questions answered? Yes, we have no hands up, Steve. Okay. Um, so, my, I'll put two questions out there. One is, when do we want to reconnect uh, again? Uh, do we want to, um, I, I know the towns are having their respective meetings. When's the next available window that we can come back uh, together as, as, again, more information will come up between now and town meetings? When is Freetown's town meeting? June 5th. Okay, so you're late. All right, we're, we're May 8th. Yep. So it would be helpful to us. Um, especially the substance of change, which I imagine there will be with the House Ways and Means budget and the Senate budget, to have something in April. Kind of um, just give us an update on where things, in case anything needs to be adjusted. So, do we want to look at? Um, I'll look to the towns to sort of recognize here, but uh, like April twenty seventh, which is a Thursday, or the twenty fifth. That'd be a little late for us. Um, the week prior is April vacation, so we want to oh, go the yeah, week of April true. 10th. Yeah, it's already, you're right, it's already almost April anyway. All right, fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, yeah. I, it, I, I can make it April 25th, Ari, if you want it earlier. I, I guess I don't, I don't want to discourage communication, Steve, but from my standpoint, um, you, know, I, you know, unless there's going to be substantive sub sub change going forward, you know, anything, anything substantial being changed, um, you know, I'm pretty confident that, that your guys will just let us know as, as, as it, it, change. Yeah, so, so this is not withstanding ongoing communication, right? Yeah, so this is yeah. not going to be withstanding if, hey, by the way, these are the numbers coming in, we're going to propose right. this change, what have you. So that ongoing conversation will still happen. Okay, so right? I think your April timing sounds fine to me as a backstop. That's fine. Lorraine, are you okay with that? Uh, yes, sorry. I have... Um... Okay. I have a future um, student on my lap. Sorry. Oh, nice, nice. Twenty thirty. Um, okay, so April twenty fifth. That's at six o'clock. Anybody have any objections? As a placeholder, obviously, we'll reach out and and see if there's a need to have that. But at least get something on the calendar for everybody. Fine by me. Works, All right. Steve. I see. Thank you. Okay, Trevor, <laughs> Katie. Yep, that that works for me. Yep, I'm okay right. with that. Thank you. Uh, the 25th, great. is that what you said? April 25th, 6 o'clock. Um, so we'll play this by ear, but, um, you know, obviously it would be a public meeting, so it would have to be in person uh, unless the, the law changes between now and then. Um, it might. Uh, we'll keep that in mind. Okay. Um, the other piece that I will just put out there is I will put forward a motion to uh, recommend to the full school committee the budget number as a ceiling that we have presented in for us. Obviously, I know Kara has some legwork that potentially will bring this number down, but it will not go up. Again, the way the process is, is the school committee will vote on a budget that's the ceiling. Um, it cannot go up any based upon any new data that comes in. Uh, it can only go down, and it's something that we've done in, in prior years. But I'd like for this committee to put forward a recommendation before uh, the school committee votes on April 5th. Do we have that number, Steve? That, is it the 45-351-501? Yeah, Kara, can you put that up one more time, please? Sure. Um, so I did look at the 150. Um, and I can see where it did increase total spending and it was a formula issue. So I apologize for that. Um, so you should now see the assessment. Um, the original assessment I distributed on March 7th, I believe was the increase was 777,629. If we deduct that from this 451, 251, it's really the E&D change and the $150,000 
savings that would come from circuit breaker. So this would then bring the assessments down. Freetown would be a 1.1 and Lakeville would be a 1.91. Um, so as far as the total spending, it would be back to that 45 mil million 201 501 um, figure. Ari, that should agree hopefully to what you have. Makes sense, yep. Yep, um, so thank you for that. Um, so this so, is the number that we would recommend to the school committee at this point. That's right. I, yeah, so if, I, if this is something that we want to move forward with, I would need a, a second to the motion um, from one of the committee members, and then we can talk further on that. All right, I'll second. Who made the motion, Steve? Yes. Okay. So I'll second. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Uh, again, just to reiterate, this is just a, a recommendation from the regional FinCom um, to the full school committee, which will vote on April 5th. Uh, any further discussion points on this? Well, I'm just gonna see a quick hand. I don't see any. So we will uh, just go through a quick roll call vote since it is budget related. Um, for the committee, Jen Blum. Yes. Uh, Katie Kelly. Yes. Um, Trevor Matthews. Yes. And uh, Lorraine Carboni. Yes. And Steve Owen is a, a yes. So from a sub subcommittee perspective, we have it as passing unanimously. And I think um, Kara and Alan and anybody in the school committee can chime in. I think we continue to hear the message that things are tough. Uh, we'll continue to look at this. And obviously some of these roles are gonna be dependent upon data that comes up. Some of this is in the budget, some is not even in the budget, right? So we'll continue to watch those different pieces. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to bring forward to the discussion? No. Um, okay. Carrie, you'll send us that, that new sheet, right? Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, so we will, uh, Ari, we will send out, or Kara will send out, I say we like I'm doing that, but uh, Kara will send that out. So we have that, and then we'll also send out a meeting reminder for the April 25th at 6 o'clock. Um, the medium will be TBD, right? We will try and do Zoom if the, the law prevails, but it'll most likely be in person. Um, and uh, Ari, to your point, we will continue the ongoing conversation as things change. Great. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, 710, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Lorraine, uh, and we have a second? Second. second. All right, Ken, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ho hopefully nobody opposes. Roll call. Uh, all right, we'll do a quick roll call vote uh, to adjourn. Jen Blum. Yes. Aye. Uh, great. Thank you. Trevor Matthews. Yes. Lorraine Carboni. Yes. yes. <laughs> a, a plus one for Lorraine, right? And uh, Katie Calhita. Yes. And Steve Owen is a yes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.